your own will, your own counsel, your own judgment, oh God, the revelation of your word, oh God, will be brought even to every heart and every home today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we know for a certainty that the word of God is strong enough to do, do everything, everything that we can ever think or imagine or ask. And even as we as we come together today to hear from you, oh God, my Father, whatsoever the challenge might be, is it anything challenging our spiritual life, challenging our work with you? Is it that, Father God, in heaven there is a, there is a long-standing habit, oh God, that we need to get rid of? Is it, Father God, in heaven, oh Lord, that many, oh God, are looking, oh God, for that breakthrough, for that way out of that situation, way out of that poverty, that problem, that challenge. We pray, Father God, in heaven, O oh Lord, that as your word will come forth today, O oh God, you will bring solution, O oh God, because we know the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous have led much, and your word is able to do, to do the impossible. The Bible declares that if we have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, we can say to the mountain, be thou removed, and if we do not doubt in our hearts, Heart, we will get that which we ask. As we come today, Father God, we pray that as we engage in faith with the world that will come today, our lives will be, will turn around for the best. We'll turn around for the best. We'll take a turn for the very best, oh God. And our spiritual lives, Father God, you never know, Lord, which is the more important part, oh God, of our existence, Father God, will begin to take cognizance of this part of our lives. We'll begin to give it the pride of place, the true place, oh God, in our lives lives, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We bless you, God. We give you all the glory. Precious Holy Spirit, have your way. Take the lead. Take the lead, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I'm really, really so excited for today, and, and I pray uh, as we call uh, the man of God forth to share the word of God. Every one of us, let us engage uh, the Bible says that we must be hearers of the word and doers. But if we do not even hear the word swell and we do not engage with the word, how can we really be doers of the word? So uh, it's good practice for us to get our pen and our book and then scribble thoughts down and anything that really jumps out to us as we hear the word. Uh, the Bible says that we must write the vision down. So it is good practice. God, God encourages us to write things down so that when we write them down, we can visit them again. We can reinforce them again. They become a part and parcel of us. So I enjoy everyone watching us to to. Uh, take a, 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 a chillax, as, as they put it in certain parlance, and then uh, as I invite Pastor to share the word of God with us. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Isaac. That was powerful opening section. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. No matter where you are watching us from, I want to say God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So today is such a wonderful day indeed, a day the Lord has made. Today is the beginning of the month of May. This is called the month of grace. Five, number five is a, a number of grace. Hallelujah. So today we'll be looking into the word of God. And I believe God at the end of this section today, your life will be transformed forever in the name of Jesus. So whatever you are watching us from, you are welcome to this platform. God bless you. Please kindly share this message with your friends and family members, because I believe they will really be blessed today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, our topic says a story of two people in church, a story of two people in church. And today, our text will be taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Remember, the topic today is a story of two people, two men, two individuals in the church, in the church. And it says, verse 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, 
and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Verse 27, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Father, we just ask that you be glorified, even as your word is coming forth today. Lord, speak to every heart. Let there be revival and transformation. Let there be deliverance and freedom. May every works of darkness that from today, Lord, as your word will come forth, Lord, we will engage with the spoken word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, today our topic is the story or a tale of two people in the church. The story of two people in the church. You know, whenever you go to a church, there are two kinds of people you will get there. And today we're going to run through certain things to find out who we are and what kind of person are we in the church. Amen? So every choice we make in life shapes us in some ways, you know, but there is a, a bedrock decision. There is the foundation, a, that decision that we make that we establish every other decision, every other choice we make in life. And so in New Glory, we try as much as possible to bring the clarity of the word of God to us so that we will not just be people who are tossed to and fro, not knowing when to turn right or when to turn left. Amen? So our text today was talking about two men. But it can also be applied to every person in the body of Christ. So when I say two men, just I'm speaking about the body of Christ, two people, two individuals in the body of Christ. And so Jesus told us a story about two men who both had a vision. They both had a vision. These two people, both of them wanted to build a house. And also these people, as we saw, they also had the word of God. The Bible says, and whosoever hears, we can see that these two men, both of them had the word of God. These two people, they had the word of God. And then the same thing, but both of them also, they had some struggles. They had some challenges. So these two people, they had a vision. They want to build a house. They had the word of God. And they also had some struggles. So I want you to know that these two people, but we are going to compare them to see who are we. Everyone you see in the church, in the body of Christ, is either in one, one group or the other. It is either you are in the the, the the area of the wise or in the area of the foolish. So today we're going to examine the word of God and compare what does the Bible mean when it says one was wise and one was foolish. Amen. And so in verse 24 it says the wise man built his house on the rock. So the wise man built his house on the rock and the foolish man built his house on the sand. On the side, it's talking about what they build their house on. It has to do with foundation, foundation. So anytime you look at a building or a person's life or a marriage or a ministry, anything, the, 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 the thing that it has to do, the main thing that holds any building or, or any person's life is the foundation. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If your foundation is not strong, what can that person do? Amen. So the first structure, the first thing that holds every person in place is the foundation. So before you can build, you need to first of all put in a foundation. But in the Christian work with God, your foundation is so important as we have seen in this place today. So if you build your on sand, it's going to be quick. 
If you see a man who is building, like when you go to the seaside and see somebody building, if they are building on a sand, it's going to be very quick. But somebody who wants to build on a rock, on a rock, is going to take time. It's going to take time. But that person, people may look at that person as being foolish, but that person is actually the wise one, the person who builds on the rock. Amen. So the wise man in verse 24 had the words of Jesus. Jesus said, whoever that hears my word and acts upon them is a wise person. Whoever that hears the word of God and acts upon them is a wise person. And Jesus said, the one that hears my word and does not act on them is a foolish person. Is a foolish person. So if you want to build a life, if you want to build a home, if you want to build a ministry, if you want to build a society, if you want to build a house, if you want to build a family, it must be resting on the right foundation, on the right foundation, okay? The right foundation is not necessarily information. Your ability to receive information or to acquire information, the difference between the wise man and the foolish man was their willingness and their unwillingness to act on what they have been taught. I want you to get that. The difference between a wise person and a foolish person is the willingness or unwillingness to act upon what they know. Like if you know, if you read in a book that, okay, that if you cross the road without dying, if you cross the road without looking, a person may be killed by a car. Now you have read it. It is now your duty to apply it. Now, if just you know it, you read about it, you know it, but you don't apply it, and the person may, may be prone to accident. The person may, may be killed by a car because the person did not apply what they have learned. Amen. So, in other way, only when the word of God is applied. That is when it actually works. It's only when the word of God is applied in your life, in your situation, that is when it actually works. It's not by going to church. It's not by praying prayers. It's not by singing. It's when the word of God is applied in our circumstances. The word of God does not work because you heard of it, because you read about it. Because it was preached, and you were there in the church when Pastor Frank preached powerfully. It wasn't because you were here. It wasn't because you read about it. It wasn't because you know it. But it works because you put it to work. Because you engage it. Hearing the word of God preached and getting excited about it, getting excited about what you had without putting it into practice will not make it work. Amen. God does not work because you said amen. You know, sometimes we believe because I said amen, I can be doing anything I want to do. I can be living any kind of lifestyle I want to live. If any person says prayer and I say amen, that is it. That, that means that thing is going to work for me. Can I say today that that's not the case? Because you said amen to a prayer, because you said amen to a word, does not bring it, does not make that word to work in your life, does not make that word to come to reality in your situation. Amen? Because you have listened to the word of God or hear somebody preach about it, will not make that thing to work. Hallelujah. So one man is called the wise man and the other is called the foolish person. So in the church, in New Glory, for example, somebody, some people may be in the category of the wise people. And another person may be in the category of the foolish person, of foolish people. But my prayer today that every one of us in new glory will be in the category of the wise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's define the two of them. Who is a wise person and who is a foolish person? You know, wisdom in the Bible is the ability and the responsibility of applying God's truth to live realities, live realities. It is the responsibility tied to the ability to apply God's word 
to our life situations. Our life situations. So when you apply the word of God to your life situations, it begins to work. It begins to work. It begins to work. And on the other hand, a fool, the fool according to the book of Proverbs, if he studied the book of Proverbs from chapter 1 to the end, he, he made it so clear who is a foolish person and who is a wise person. So is the inability or the refusal to apply spiritual truths to life realities or decision making? Decision making. Every day we go through a number of decisions. From the first time we wake up in the morning, the decision whether to pray or not to pray, the decision whether to read our Bible or not to read it, we make all these decisions. And a foolish person will make decisions that are not in line with the word of God. Okay, you wake up in the morning. Yes, the word of God says pray, study the word. Oh no, I don't have time for that. Maybe I will do that later on. That's a decision. So from these little things, you begin to build your life. Who are you today? According to the word of God, are you the wise or are you the foolish person? And so from there, you will know that if you are wise or foolish by the decision you make, so every time you make decisions, you don't need a man of God, a woman of God to say you are wise. Based on your own decisions, you can see if you are wise or you are foolish. Amen. But my prayer today is that as of entering this new month, we will be wise people in the name of Jesus. We will be wise people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So being wise is not just by by, by quoting scriptures, by the amount of information you have or the amount of scriptures you are able to quote. You can quote the entire Bible, but if you are not leaving them out, if you are not applying them to your life, to your marriage, to your situations, then you don't really know them. Amen. So it's not about speaking Christian language, speaking faith, speaking all these things. Yes, those things are good, but it means absolutely nothing. If there is no decision to take that spiritual truth, you know, and apply it to your life scenarios. If you cannot apply those truths of the word of God, if you cannot apply those things you have learned into your own life, into your everyday life, then it becomes completely useless. When you choose God by action, not simply by talking, then you have activated divine programming of the word of God into your life situations. So when you choose the word of God and decide to act on it, you heard maybe today that pray, you decide to act on it, you had fast, and you decide to act on it, then you are activating a divine program. You are activating the word of God to work for you. But if you come here today, we're talking about fasting, and you hear it, but you're not willing. Your unwillingness to engage with it will not make it, even if I pray here and pray here and prophesy here, you can say amen. If you don't engage the word of God, it will come to nothing. Nothing will happen. Nothing will take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what a lot of us do as Christians is try to do miss rock and sand. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in the church today, what most of us do is try to miss the rock and the sand. So we have Sunday rock. Amen. Sunday rock. So we try to take the word of God. Yeah, we believe this is the word of God. But then also, we also have our own human wisdom. Say, yes, I don't want to apply the word of God like that. You know, there is a way, there is a way. I do my own things. I have a way I apply the wisdom. I know the way. There is a way that I do my own stuff, you know. You are not entirely to the word of God. I'm not just being foolish to take the word of God the way it is. I'm not just, I don't want to just apply the word of God the way it is. You know, God's wisdom, yes, I, I can see the wisdom there, but I know how to tweak it around to, to, for my own good, for my own benefit. Amen. So Sunday is like human wisdom. When I say Sunday, rock. Sunday is like human wisdom, man's point of view. 
the way you want to do something, the way your parents have taught you this is how to do things, the way your friends want to do something, the convenient way of doing it, that is Sunday, your way, the convenient way of doing it, the way the media says you need to do it, this is called Sunday way. Sunday way, it's like you want to do at the convenient way. Yes, yeah, the word of God is true, yeah, but you know, I also want to apply my own wisdom. I want to also do it my own way, not God's way. You know, and the rock, on the other hand, is, is a view on God's standpoint. The rock is God's point of view acted upon. So when I say the rock is like the God's point of view acted upon. So a lot of Christians knows that they need rock and they want rock, but they use sand. Why? Because it is convenient. It is easy. It is easy to mix both of them. I am not an unbeliever. I believe in God, but my times, my way. I believe in God. I want to follow God, but my way. I want to do the work of God, but my way. I want to obey God, but my own way. Not necessarily how God wants it to be done. Not necessarily how God, yes, God said marriage should be pure, with bed undefiled. Yes, God, I'm a Christian, but you know what? I want to do it my way. My own way, yes, I can see what you're saying, God, but I don't mind, I can defy my bed. I can, I can have a relationship with my friend. I can do it my own way so that, you know, they apply human wisdom, Sunday. So they know, and then, in future, because people have not built the foundation on the word of God, trouble will begin to set in. Amen. Amen. So Matthew chapter 15, verse 6 says, Thou, thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. By your tradition. So once you want to, to add your own way of doing your tradition, maybe tra the culture of the place you came from, maybe the, the, the Yoruba culture or the Igbo culture or the English culture or the Indian culture. Once you want to mix up those cultures, those traditions, Jesus was saying, you have made the commandment of God of no effect. Both of them cannot work. It is either your way or God's way. God is not in the business of mismatch. Okay, you won't obey me, but halfway. You want to do it halfway. You want to, to, to serve me, but in your own terms. Amen? So this is where we need to examine ourselves. How do we serve God? Are we coming to him and say, Lord Jesus, you are my master? Or are we coming and say, Lord Jesus, okay, you can be my Lord in certain days, but in certain decisions, I am in charge. In certain ways, I will do my own way, the way it pleases me. But Jesus, but in certain ways also, I can listen to you, okay? In certain ways, I will listen to you. You will be my Lord. In certain ways, I want to be your Lord. Have you thought of it that way? Certain ways, you want to say, okay, now I want to obey Jesus right now. It's convenient. I want to obey Jesus. But when it's not convenient, we want Jesus to obey us now. Let's do it my own way, my human way. So here he's saying that... It, but the commandment, you have made the word of God, the commandment of God of no effect. It doesn't work. You pray and pray and fast. It's not working. Why? Because you are canceling your prayer by your way of life. By your way of life. So once you apply your own ways, you cancel out God's ways. So a lot of us actually cancel out the very thing we are wanting by bringing a foreign point view into the equation. Amen. So the Bible says, let God be true, and let every man be a liar. Let God's words be true. Let the will of God stand, and let every man be liars. So including myself. So if I am facing a situation, I, I don't want to redefine the word of God by what I am going through personally. No, the Bible says, let God be true. Let God be true. Let his word be true, and let me be a liar. Amen. So I want us to know that God wants to be true in every circumstance, in every situation. That is when his word will work in our lives. Hallelujah. So when you bring human wisdom and attach it to divine revelation, what God is saying is this kind of things cannot work. I am not involved in it. It is not going to happen. And so even in our testimonies, have you not seen some people 
the, the testimonies we share sometimes, we don't really say the details. We come, we hear, praise God. God has done it. But actually, was it God or your human wisdom? Actually, was it God or you? Actually, was it God or did you have to compromise with the devil to get that blessing? And then you come to the church and say, praise God. Hallelujah. God has done it. No. God wants us to let him have the praise. Don't allow the kingdom of darkness to do something and you, you put a stamp that is God. No. Our ways not to be, need to be true before God. We need to be 100% in line with his will. It may take time because it's not a quick fix. It may take time because God is not a magician. Yes, the will of God may be like building your house on the rock. It may take time, but eventually it will stand the test of time. Eventually it will stand the test of time. Amen. So it, one thing again you need to know, when everything was going well, these two houses, they were looking so beautiful. They were looking great. These two people, these two families was looking so wonderful. These two marriages was looking so wonderful. These two things were looking so wonderful until the storm came. Until the storm came. So in as much as there was not a storm, in that marriage, everything is wonderful. Everything is beautiful. You, you, you can't tell who is applying the word of God or who is not. Everything is looking wonderful. But once a storm comes to it, once there is a storm, then you begin to, the, the, the reason they are standing upon will not be revealed. Hallelujah. So here he says, the, the storm, the rain came. And the wind blew. Amen. And the wind blew. And the floods came. So if you put these things together, it's not talking about those small problems or small rain. Because small rain can come and the houses can still be standing. Small rain can come upon that home, upon that family, upon that person's life. And the person can maybe somehow manage to endure. But here he's talking about the rain, the flood, the wind. The storm, all these kind of things coming together. To me, when I see this, I see it as a hurricane, not a small problem. Not a small problem. But when it came, when it came, it was able to, the house that was built on a rock was still standing. Still standing. And I want to challenge us here in New Glory today. Now listen, when you build your life according to the word of God, it may be as if you are wasting time. When you build your marriage on the sure foundation of the word of God, it may take time, but no matter what external pressure may come upon that marriage, it will still stand. People, the same rain that came upon the house built on the sand was the same rain that came upon the house built on the rock, the same problem, the same struggles, and yet, the one that was built on the sand was scattered, was destroyed. And the one that was built on the rock was able to stand. Please, don't take this thing so casual. Don't take it that, well, I choose and pick. My husband understands. My wife understands. In fact, we are in this together like Ananias and Sapphira. Sometimes we can lie together. It doesn't matter. Listen, your truth will make your spouse to, to know who you are. If you are standing for truth, your spouse will look at you and say, I know my husband does not lie. I know my wife does not lie. And so, no matter the challenge that will come in your marriage or your relationship, that person, that will be able, that will be a strong point for them to rely upon. But if I begin to see my wife, my, my wife is compromising here and there, or my husband is compromising here and there, if I begin to see that when there is storm, when there are issues, I would, when they are telling me something, I wouldn't even believe, I wouldn't even know where, because I know you as a liar. So you telling me this, which one do I believe? I know you before now. And that's why we need to examine ourselves and make sure we are living according to the standard of the word of God. Hallelujah. 
it may sound so, so harsh, but this is the only thing that can make us to stand the test of time. This is the only thing, applying the word of God. People who tremble at this word, not just hearing the prophecies, not just hearing the words, shouting amen, saying, oh, it is well with my soul. No, but people who actually apply those things in their life. Hallelujah. Because I would like to tell you there won't be a time of storm in your life. I would like to say that. But if I say that, I will be deceiving you. I would like to say you will never face issues in life. You will never face challenges in life. You will never face obstacles in life. If, if, if I say that to you, I will only be lying to you. The truth is, there will be a time when there will be storm. There will be a time when there will be challenges. There will be a time when you will come to a confused junction. There will be a time when you want to ask, is Jesus the real way or is there another way? There will be a time you want to find out, oh God, this thing I believe, why is it is not working? And this is where people in the Pentecostal world, they have taken it out of context. Everything is about power, power, power. God move, move, move. God will do it. God will do it. And a lot of people are not taking heed to form their character. Some people, if you call for a meeting today and say, let's do prophetic training. Let's do or the gifts of the spirit, prophecy. A lot of people will come. But when we say, let's talk about character formation, character formation, your character, who are you? How is your character? Let's talk about the fruits of the spirit. Many people will not attend. They will run away. They will run away and say, no, it's not for me. For me, my character, you know, I want to give their power, their power, their power. Without knowing that without character, the power will destroy. Without character, that power will destroy you. It's like driving a very nice car without learning how to drive the car. So, as this one is coming forth, I want to ask you, are you acting upon the word of God? Or are you using human wisdom? You are choosing and mixing. That I want to do this one, and I don't want to do this one. Are we wise, or are we foolish? Are we building upon the rock? Or are we doing a quick fix, a quick fix, building upon the sand? Which one are you? doing you know today because so many people have not built their marriage for example upon the rock when trouble comes you hear divorce so many people today they can't take it they can't even stand it why because they've not taken time to obey to apply the word of god to their lives maybe they can be in, and this one today even the church folks the 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 register, the, the percentage of people who are going for divorce, even in Christendom, is so high. Why? Because people are coming and choosing what word of God will I obey, which one will I apply, and which one will I leave. And so they're not taking time to build upon the rock. And so when trouble comes, when trouble comes, there is nowhere to run to because there is no enough word of God in their lives, they are not applying it. They may know it, they may quote it, they may speak it, they, if you ask them to preach about it, or they can talk about it, but it lacks the power because it's not been applied in their own personal life. And so when situation comes, when challenges of life comes, it pulls them apart. But today, there will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. There will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. And so, in any area, is it in the area of finance? I want to encourage you today, make your finances, build it upon the sure word of God, build it on the firm foundation. Is it in the area of raising your children? Raise them upon the sure foundation, not on, th on things that tickles their ears. Do you know what the Bible says? It says, at the end, towards the end of the age, people will hate the truth. People will be having itchy ears. They won't want to hear a sound word. They will be looking for a quick fix, a quick fix, something, do it quick. I don't want to engage, but pastor, anyhow you can do it sharp, sharp. Just do it somehow. Do it sharp, somehow. I don't want to apply the word of God. I don't want to apply a pastor, but if you can apply it in your life, that is enough, pastor. No, it doesn't work like that. 
unless you apply that word of God, your challenges may be different from my challenges. But the amount of the word of God you have and the one I have will make the difference. Hallelujah. I don't know some people today, they apply for a job and get disappointed. Apply again and get disappointed. There are two Christians. One is going through the same rejection. Another one is going through the same rejection. But the one who has built their faith upon the word, who is acting upon the word, no matter how many times they get rejected, they know that that job, my own job is coming to me. And so they're not disturbed. But the other person who has built on a sand, who is not applying the word of God, will say, this God has fed me. After my fasting and prayers, after my praying all night, even pastor prayed, even this person prayed, all my fasting, God is not here. Is this God true? Why? Because they have, been, they have not been applying the word of God. The same situation, A is going through, B is going through, but their reaction, their reaction is because of the amount of the word of God they have in them. One is looking for a quick face. I want job today. I pray. Let it be done now. And this other one is saying, God, let your will be done. I love this job. I want to get it. But Father, yes, I love it. Lord, I have done everything in my power to do. I have read for the interview. I have done this. I have done that. But Lord, even at this, Lord, let your will be done. And so, no matter the outcome, no matter the outcome, they are at peace. Because they know their father loves them. They know their God loves them. And God wants the best for them. Why the other person will be thinking, oh, this God hates me. He doesn't answer my prayer. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that for me. Amen. So I want us to see the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 40. I'm not going to read it in your time. Please read it. It's quite very powerful. Jesus has finished speaking with his disciples. He has been preaching and preaching and preaching, speaking to them, and they came to a point where Jesus said, he concluded, said, okay, all of them were shouting, hallelujah, praise God, amen, 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 Jesus, amen, man of, go ahead, Jesus. They were shouting, excited about what they were hearing. And after Jesus concluded, Jesus said, let us go on the other side. Let's go on the other side. And then they entered into the boat and began to go on the other side. As they were going, as they were going on the other side, Jesus took a pillow, a pillow, and decided to go and sleep. As Jesus was sleeping, there was a mighty storm. Mighty storm. These people, it wasn't just an ordinary storm because most of them were fishermen. They are used to storm. They are used to challenges. They are used to the wind. But not just that, the storm was unusual. And as they were battling with this storm, trying to bail out water, they looked the other side of the boat. And who did they see? They saw Jesus sleeping. Sleeping. Not just falling asleep by mistake. Here it says, Jesus was actually lying on a pillow, on a cushion. So he went to bed, maybe snoring. Maybe snoring. I don't know some people like us, that when you want Jesus, maybe you are going through challenges, you are going through issues. And you pray, you fast, and you're calling upon Jesus. It's like Jesus was sleeping. You are calling upon him. Jesus, don't you care, Jesus? Jesus, why not intervene? And it was as if Jesus was, Jesus is sleeping. That was how the disciples felt. They were struggling. They were about to be killed. All of them. And Jesus was still there with them, but sleeping. And so, they went to, and begin to wake him up. The Bible says, they arose him out from sleep. They arose him, and they woke him up, and said to him, teacher, you do not care what you, you do not care that we are perishing? Have you not asked that question sometimes? Jesus, look at me in this situation. Don't you hear my prayer? I've cried, I've wept. Don't you care that I'm perishing? And Jesus, when he woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, be still. But in, in verse 40, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I mean, this kind of thing, I suppose somebody like Peter would say, how are you calling this one being fearful? We are almost about to die, you're saying we are being fearful. If you don't step in, there would have been that, it, 
all of them would have died. You see? And then sometimes in our lives, we, we feel that way. The pressure, the challenge. It's like, Jesus, where are you? Where are you? Come up. Come up. Why not answer me now? And Jesus will be looking at, where is your faith? So it's not about the challenge you are going through. That thing could be tough. It could be hard. Jesus will be asking you, where is your faith? Why are you so panicky? Look at Peter, about to be killed the following day, yet sleeping in the prison. Sleeping. Because of total, when they have encountered, when they, they now understood who Jesus was and what he can do for them, when they faced challenges, it was not disturbing them anymore. Have you come to that point? When challenges of life don't disturb you anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, I want us to know that the difference between Christians in the church, the difference between people, the difference between husband and wife, the difference between people you see in church, is somebody, you may be looking at them, they may know, know the information, they know the word, know how to speak it, but they don't apply it to their life. And another person may know the word, may not even know much, but that little they have in them, they are applying it to their lives. That makes the difference. And so he's saying, build your foundation upon the word of God. Because your foundation determines your future. Amen. And the foundation built upon the word of God is seeing the scriptures, applying the scriptures to our life on a daily basis. Finally, I want us to read a place and we'll pray. James chapter one, verse 22 to 25. And then we'll pray. James chapter one, verse 22 to 25. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Verse 25. For he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues, I want to make that word, continues in it, and is not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. This one will be blessed in what he does. This man, this woman will be blessed in what she does. So, as we are, God has delivered us or been with us during the time of crisis and pandemic, now we are about to, to come out again on the other side. I wonder how many of us today will say, God, I will be with you. I will not forsake your ways. I will not go my own ways. I will not allow the, the modern things of this life to take your place from me. I will not allow money, materialism, materialism to take me away from you. I will not allow the, the, the deceitfulness of riches, of wealth to take me away from you. I will not allow the devil to dangle gold and silver before me. And with that, take me away from your presence. I will not allow that. Shall we pray? Thank you, Jesus. Having had the word today, I want you to talk to God right now. What kind of Christian are you? What kind of Christian are you? Shall we talk to God right now? I want us to bow down our head and begin to talk to God. What kind of Christians are we? Are we people? Are we the wise or the foolish? Are we building upon the rock? Or are we building upon the sand? Talk to God right now. Talk to God right now. Are you building according to the word of God? Or are you building according to sand? Talk to God right now, Father. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, let's pray right now. Lord to God, yes, Lord. Talk to God right now. Are you building according to God's word? Are you a forgetful hearer? 
or are you a doer of the word? Are you mixing human wisdom? Are you mixing human wisdom to the wisdom of God? I want to talk to God. In your life, in your career, in your future, in your calling, in your ministry, are you abiding according to the word of God? Yes, Lord. Talk to God right now. Talk to God right now. Say, God, help me. You may not have been abiding according to the word of God. But right now you can say, Lord Jesus, I submit to you. I want to follow you. I don't want to be like the foolish man who built his house upon the sand. I want to be like the wise man. I want to apply every word I'm hearing. I want to apply every scripture. I want to apply your word to my life situation. I want to apply the scriptures to my circumstances. I want to apply the scriptures to the scenarios of my life. Talk to God right now. And say, Father, I want to apply the scriptures. Right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I want to apply your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to pray this month. In this new month, Lord, I will not be a, a forgetful hearer of your word. Lord, I will apply your word in my life in this month. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray, say, Lord, this month, this new month, Father, I come to you. In the name of Jesus. I don't want to be a forgetful hearer. This month, oh God, I want to build my life on your word. I want to submit to your counsel on every area of my life, oh God. Lord, I want to apply your word. I don't want to, Lord, choose a mix which you want to obey. I want my life, Lord, to bring. I want my life to shine forth your glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, help me, oh God, help me to build my life according to the scriptures, to build my life according to your word. Father, help me today. I want us to pray right now in the name of Jesus. And say, Father, help me in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, oh God. Yes, Lord, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Say, God, help us today. In the name of Jesus, begin to decree into this month. And say, in this new month, oh God, I receive grace. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace, I receive grace. I receive grace, I receive strength. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray. In this new month, begin to decree, I receive strength. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I decree this month, anything you don't want in your life, begin to pray right now. Say God to take them away. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray right now. And say, Father, I yield my life to you. In the name of Jesus, I yield my life to you. I yield my situation to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, be glorified right now. In every situation of my life, in the name of Jesus, I decree, oh God, I will put you first in every area, Lord. I receive grace in this month. I decree in the name of Jesus, your glory has gone ahead. Let your presence abide with me. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, let your presence abide with me. Let your power abide with me. Let your glory abide with me in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Begin to pray. Say, Lord, have your way right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Malikata begin to decree into this new month begin to decree the power of god begin to decree the power of god begin to decree right now anything you want god to do for you this month anything you want to see happen in your destiny begin to decree oh god in the name of jesus every storm is about to come to you begin to take authority against every storm begin to take authority against every storm begin to decree right now by the power of god in the name of jesus i take authority the bible said jesus rebook the storm jesus say you storm be still you can decree right now and say every storm that may want to rise up against my life in this month i command you right now be still in the name of jesus be still be still be still be still be still be still, be still. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, King of glory. Father, we want to live according to your word, according to your principle. Lord, we want to do your will, oh God. We want to obey you in all things. And so far, we ask King of glory, we have not come to pick and choose. We want to be people, wise people indeed, people who will apply your word, who apply scriptures to our life, to our situations, oh God. And so far, we cannot do it without your grace. And so for this month of grace, we ask, give us the grace, oh God, to apply your word in every circumstances, in every situation, in every area of our lives, oh God. Help us to be the doers of your word and not the hearer from today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This month, I decree you are blessed. No performed against you shall prosper this month. You possess your possessions this month. Everything God has ordained for you shall come to you. In the name of Jesus, you will not miscarry any of your blessings this new month. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the power that is in the name of Jesus will speak for you. I decree the blood of Jesus will work for you. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Brian Isaac to take us in a few prayers and to conclude the meeting. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you for that wonderful message. Uh, a time of refreshing, a time uh, where we need to hear the very the hard truths, the hard truths of the Word of God. Uh, that if we can hear all we we care, we can hear all we want, but if we do not take time out to act on the very words of Christ, uh, uh, I, I was just refre reflecting. When, when the second scripture came, the James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25, when James was lightening us to people who see themselves in the mirror and immediately they forget uh, who they were or they forget who they are. And that tied really nicely to the very words of Jesus Christ that said that that person is a foolish person and the other person is a wise, wise person, the one that acts on the word. Thank you so very much, Pastor. Uh, it has really blessed me. Um, these kind of messages, these kind of messages, they are the important things, the things that really um, make us sure footed in Christ. It is really not about looking for quick fix, like, like Pastor has said. Quick fix will give us temporary gratification. But more importantly, God is interested in our daily work with Him, our daily work with Him, our spiritual life, how we end, how we end. And that's why the book of Matthew 6 33. The very words of the, the book of Matthew 6 is really, really, really instrumental. How God actually patterned it out for us, gave us the right ordering of things, the right priorities for things, how that we must seek first, seek first, seek first the kingdom of God. So we can be praying all we want, praying for requests, praying for our needs. But if we have not sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, who also be like that man who hears the word and don't do. Because what the word says is that there is priorities with things, our spiritual needs, our spiritual requests, first are important to God. And that's what we need to constantly strive to ensure that we do not lose. And our physical needs, our emotional needs, every other thing, the needs of every other thing that we can think of, the Bible says those things will naturally fall into place because we are giving the pride of place to the important things of life. So we're just going to be praying, just one prayer point, and then we'll end the meeting. So we're going to be praying now. We're going to be saying, Father, we have heard your word. We have heard your word. Uh, beyond just, because when Pastor was teaching that word, I was trying to, I was trying to uh, rummage through my my repertoire of knowledge and and it was revelation that dawned in my spirit that okay we can know the word of god as as head knowledge we know we know we know we can quote scriptures and all of that but there's a fine line between just knowing the word of god as head knowledge and then actually using it to transit transit into wisdom so knowledge that does not transit 
into wisdom, the application of that knowledge is really not knowledge. And th that's not the kind of knowledge that God wants us to have. Uh, just to acquire and acquire and know that God is good and is all powerful and hear the Bible stories uh, without actually taking time out to say, Father, what is it that you want me to do with my life? How exactly do you want me to work with you? The Bible says that Enoch walk with God. There were people that, very few people that the Bible says that they walked with God. So it is, it is, we will be in, we will be in a, a exclusive company when God can say of us that we walk with him. And that's what is really, really important. So we're going to be praying that Father God in heaven, we have heard your word, but we really want to walk with you. We want to walk with you. We want to walk with you. And, and uh, the image that comes to mind is the image of a young child that is being held by the father. There could be, there could be, uh, there could be what a uh, tottering. There could be a falling, falling many times, and the child is rising up again. There could be, there could be a. Uh, 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 Many times that the, the child will be limping, maybe uh, standing on one foot, or kneeling down and not walking well. Uh, we, we, can, we can see all, our, all of our past in that light. Uh, and now we're ready to chart a new course with God uh, to say, Father, as long as you're ready to hold me, as long as you're ready to hold me, I will walk with you. I will walk with you. Let's take it to God in prayer that Father God, let today mark the beginning of a new walk with you. Let today so that I will reflect, I will look back on 2nd of May 2021 and say, of course, uh, I have known God. Of course, I had known God. But that day, that particular day, I would never forget. It began a chapter, a chapter of new work with God uh, that has catapulted our lives for the better, that has transformed our lives for the better. Let us begin to say that. Let us begin to recommit to God in that way, that we want to work with him. We want to work with him. We want to work with him. We want to work. We want to continue to enjoy this ride with him. We do not want to look back. We do not want to be like that one that sees themselves in the mirror and, and immediately they forget the kind of image that they saw. Uh, how, 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 how dreadful, how wretched will it be that the children, the children of God, the children that are supposed to be to be, 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 be enjoying all of their inheritances uh, and we are living in short supply. But we cannot get all the supplies of God. We cannot get all the physical benefits uh, if, if our spiritual our spiritual status is not given the pride of place. And Father God, in heaven, oh Lord, we thank you. Father God, we want to begin a new work with you, Father. Help each one of us. We bring new glory, oh God, and all of our viewers, oh God, even to you, Father God. We want to work with you in a new way, in a fresh way, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God in heaven, oh Lord, so that Father God, when there be any trouble or the challenges of life come, Father God, your grace will keep us standing because we are working with you, because we will learn to work with you, we will learn to know your mind, I will pursue after the things that matter, the things that are enduring, the things, the things, oh God, that are eternal in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone that has been a part of this program. I, I, I do believe that uh, everyone has been blessed. Uh, you, it is impossible uh, for us to hear this kind of message or um, <clears throat> or word and 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 be willing and ready to engage and and actually do engage with it and we will not see results in our lives. Uh, we have truly been blessed. Every one of us that have dared to engage with the words uh, of God that have come forth today, if we dare to take that next step, that next go, take that extra mile, leave our comfort zone, say, God, my spiritual life, I want to, I want to really watch out for my spiritual life now. And, and I believe that that blessing, the, the spiritual blessing that has been deposited, that has been endowed on each one of us today, uh, we will not lose it in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, this cast has come to us, called to see New Glory Christian Center International Ministries. Um, as it's a custom every Sunday like this, we will meet uh, between uh, 2 p.m. and around uh, 3, 3 30 p.m. UK time. So we enjoy you to, uh, to don't touch that dial every Sunday, make it a day with us. And, and it is really not going to be a day with us, but a date with God. And we, we believe, we believe as you journey with us on this course, the Lord God Almighty uh, will make everything, everything 
uh, that is starting as a barrier will become a plane in our lives in Jesus' name. And on, on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, um, although for uh, two Wednesdays now we've not had it, uh, that's our hour of freedom, hour of freedom. Uh, but I trust that it might be cool. We'll be having it this new, uh, this week, um, uh, hour of freedom, which normally would uh, have it between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. UK time. And then on Fridays, on Fridays, on Fridays, I'm really excited about our Fridays, uh, a time that, um, everyone feels really at home uh we we enjoy we enjoy the although we don't get orgs online we don't get to org online but we enjoy the camaraderie we enjoy the fellowship from brother to sister as we share the word of god it is really an opportunity to uh, learn some very fine details about our personal lives even as we share the word of god so we enjoy you to be a part of that a part of our community a part of this um this house that God is building himself, uh, and, and that Wednesday, uh, Friday rather, we'll have a Bible study between 7.30 p.m. and 9 p.m. UK time. Uh, be a part of us. And then uh, finally, 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 we're having evangelism, evangelism in the house. Um, as is our custom, uh, we've taken it upon ourselves now that every week, every week, every week, we must go out and share the word. I was listening to a message, uh, I think about two days ago, and then the pastor was saying that perhaps we, we don't feel really motivated and convicted uh, to go and share the word because we do not know, we do not really understand the gravity of what God himself has saved us from. Because if we know what God has saved us from, the Bible says that we were dead. Well, we, we were dead in sin. We were not, we were not half dead. We were dead. And, and, and the, the ransom, the ransom that was paid was the death, the burial of Christ. And then we have been made our life. So if we know that, that should drive us, that conviction should take us into the troubled world to share the word of God so that the same grace that has been poured upon us can be poured upon uh, um, the world, uh, the world people, the world of, of different races and different colors. So um, on Saturday, this Saturday, personally, I oh, will be meeting up. We'll be meeting up uh, for evangelism uh, in 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 our central uh, office or central church in Eastern. Uh, so anyone, anyone, feel free. You want to reach us? You are. Uh, in London, you are neighborhood, you want to be a part of this community, you are most welcome to all of this program. And I uh, will pray that as you join any one of our programs, uh, that will be the beginning of great things in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have a wonderful afternoon.